Hi guys, I got a great video for you and we're gonna bust some of the biggest myths out there in putting. One of the things that I was always taught is when you're putting, you wanna be very consistent back and through. So if my putter goes back a foot, it needs to come through a foot, kind of like a pendulum stroke or a, a grandfather clock, back and through, very, very consistent. And that makes a lot of sense. It sounds really good, nice and even stroke, makes a lot of sense. The problem is that can actually lead, for you, lead you to decelerate on some putts, be inconsistent with your timing and your stroke and your tempo. And let me tell you a little bit more about this. So recently I did a certification with a company called Sam Putt Lab, and they've done the, the ton of research on the tour and a ton of research with the putting stroke. So the Sam is an actual machine. It's an, uh, an ultrasound machine that sends out waves, and then you attach these special clips to your putter, and it reads really highly detailed information about what your putting stroke is doing. So how far back and through we're putting, what the angle of the face is, how much loft is on your putter, whether you're hitting up into the ball or down into the ball, all kinds of information, pretty much everything that you're doing with your putting stroke. Now the cool thing about Sam is from 2003 to 2005, they actually went out on the PGA Tour and they measured 99 players on tour and they use that as kind of their database to see what the tour average is. What are the best players in the world doing when they're putting? Now what they found is when they're putting, they're taking it back about 34%. So let's imagine here my ball is, is where I'm making contact. I'm taking this putter back 34% and then through the ball I'm swinging through 60, or excuse me, I'm taking it back 36%, I'm swinging through 64%. So I'm swinging through, if you want to make it really, really simple, about twice the distance I'm swinging back. So I'm swinging back 30, 36, I'm swinging through 64, or one back and two through. So you always want to be accelerating through the ball. Now that's very important because if I have this kind of pendulum stroke where I go back a foot through a foot, I actually have to start slowing my putter down because it's built up some momentum. I have to start accelerating a little bit slower so that I don't go through too far. And that leads to a little bit of inconsistency with the stroke. Now, if we want to practice this, there's a great way to do this with a, our eyeline putting rail. I think it's a great tool, really helps you to kind of groove a stroke in there. And let me talk a bit, little bit more about how to use this in, uh, in a second. But one of the things that I like to do I like to see here is I can set up a camera and I can look because it has kind of marks on there showing how far back and through I'm going. I can get a good general idea of how far back and how far through I'm going. So if I'm taking it back to two marks back and I'm hitting through two marks through, I know that I'm not accelerating enough through the putt. I want to get a little bit more pop through the ball to get that ball rolling nicely and get a little bit more consistent. So we're not going to worry about today exactly how many lines are going back and through and I'll tell you why here in a minute. But I can set up a camera and see right away if I'm in the general ballpark and accelerating farther through the ball than I am going back on the ball. So I'd recommend highly working with this first to get a good feel for what that's like and getting a good visual feedback of what you're doing. Now if we want to take this a little bit more advanced into what we talk about a lot of times is variability training, mixing this up. I can put on this rail you know, thousands of times and that gives me a good blueprint, it gives me a good overall idea of what a good consistent stroke is going to feel like being nice and, and on that same arc every time. But when I take this away things are going to be a little bit different. One of the things I'd like for you guys to do is after you've put a few with the rail and you've noticed that your stroke length is, is pretty consistent on there, it looks nice, let's take some off this rail and we can kind of go back and forth. Now the advantage of taking it off the rail is now it's kind of like the, taking the training wheels off your bike. When I have the putter against the rail, the rail is always going to guide me. It's going to make it straight back and straight through. So I can actually pull with my arms back the incorrect way and my wrong muscles could be firing and it's still going to kind of force me to go in that overall idea. So nothing is going to give you a perfect stroke other than taking off the training wheels and making some real putts and kind of adjusting based on variability. So the first thing I want you to do now, after you've done a few with the putting rail, which is great to start out with, is let's go ahead and hit a few. We're gonna get the camera back out again, and we're gonna see if that same stroke length holds true when we take the rail away. If it does, we're doing really good. Now, another thing that we can do, working with the same idea of variability training, is let's do a few that are about a third back, two thirds through, or 36 and 64, just like we wanna do. And then let's try to vary that where we actually go a little too short back and then too far through. And this is going to give you a feel of what is too short of a backstroke and too much acceleration coming through. I'm going to feel a little bit jabby when I do this. So I'm going to try on this putt just to come back to about right there. And then I'm really going to come through the ball to feel too much exaggeration or too much on the other side of it. 
So now I know I'm just really popping that. I'm gonna have a tough time with consistency in my putting if I'm doing that because I'm really having to kind of jab at the ball. Now the more common one would be, and what they found through their data in Sam Putt Lab measuring amateur players, thousands of amateur players, is that generally speaking, players are taking their putter back way too far and now we have to slow down coming into the ball. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take my putter back way back here and then I'm gonna try to slow down on the, the coming through so that I'm actually decelerating a little bit. Let's try that out. Yeah, I can really feel there, even if I make one, I feel like the putter head is really unstable because I'm, I'm, I'm not training, or I'm not accelerating through the ball. So it's really good to, to not only practice the right way, but to actually practice the incorrect way as, as crazy as that sounds. So we get a good feel for the spectrum of what's too short, what's too long, and then how can I take that out to the course? So once you've done that, go ahead and hit about 20 or 30 putts on your, your putting rail or another type of device that you have to kind of give you the feedback, measure to see far, how far back and you're coming back and through. Then let's hit another five or 10 putts off the rail. See if that looks pretty consistent. And we're gonna come back to a rail again. We're gonna do some that are too short, accelerating too hard. We're gonna do some that are too long, decelerating. And then we're gonna come off the rail and try to recreate that perfect in the middle spot with a, with a great tempo. And I want you to practice this not only with one length putt, but once you finish that, we're gonna go with a few variable length putts. So some a little shorter, some a little farther. Now that's gonna really help you to get a feel for what that tempo is. You're gonna lock into that rhythm so that you can accelerate through the ball every time. You're gonna drain a lot of putts and make a lot of money off your buddy. So have fun out there, I'll see you soon. All right guys, so I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got a great bonus for you. Now, if we're gonna drain a lot of putts, we need to have that ball rolling the right speed so that it will capture any part of the cup, whether we're going in left edge, right edge, or right in the center, we're gonna make a lot more putts if we're doing this. I'm gonna play a preview from one of the great drills for speed control. If you wanna watch the full thing, just go ahead and find the I card somewhere on your screen. Click that I card, it's gonna take you to that video. You'll be able to watch that right away. Plus, you're gonna get five videos from our top speed golf system. They're gonna help you hit it farther, gonna help you hit it more solid and a lot straighter. So best of luck to you guys, and I'll see you in the speed control video. Are you sick and tired of three putting over and over again? It's absolutely the most frustrating thing you can do on the green. On well, today's video, I wanna talk about how you're gonna make a lot more putts and eliminate your three putting by doing perfect distance control. If it barely touches this edge, it's gonna lip out. There's not enough time for gravity to pull the ball down into the cup. So this cup is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking until you only have this little sliver left in the middle. It's called the string drill. And I'm gonna get a 10 foot putt going uphill and I'm just gonna lay a small piece of nylon string on the ground. You want the string to be thin enough to where the ball can easily just roll right over top of that. After we do that, level two is gonna be from 15 feet away, five in a row from 15 feet below, five in a row from 15 feet above, you don't have to do all these in one day. If you, if you wanna break it down into several days or several weeks, that's fine. And then advanced, we wanna to get to that pro caliber level. 